Look out, footy's back! It really is after a tumultuous round 18. G'day, I'm Luke Russell of the Port Adelaide Power? Question? No, I'm not at all. I'm James Clements, and this is the AFL Today Show, of course. Your one-stop shop for all things footy. Joining me for this, oh, round 18 is done. Where's the year going, mate? I don't know, eh? Uh, A local weirdos. Nothing's weird in that voice I just did, but either way. Uh, footy nuffs. Some, i.e. their mums, would call them AFL experts. Over there is Alex Donnelly. I don't even think Trish would call me an AFL oh. expert. She's just like, what about I'm your ha- grandma? Your grandma uh, Val is just happy that yeah. I have a job. <laughs> but we all know that Trish is the world's biggest hater. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, fair. in between us is a bloke who's sitting on four foot eight and a bob. <laughs> four foot eight and a bob. It's the stats boy. Five foot eight and stuff you, yeah, yeah. You're not five wait. foot eight. Five I foot am. eight, settle I am. down. I am. I no, am. you're not. You get the measuring tape out, I'm, yeah. We're going to do that on social media. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do that. We need to prove this. I've never lied about that. I, I would, I've lied <laughs> about a lot of things on this show. profile says otherwise. I've lied a lot about a lot of things on this show, but yeah, not he, that. He does lie about six inches a lot as well. All right. <laughs> Joining me <laughs> Subway, yeah. is the stats boy, is Alex. Let's do it. We're talking all things round, ta- round 18. So before we get into the wraps of yep. every single game, uh, remember, YouTube channel. Yes. All the socials, get right around them, or we'll send stats boy around there to lie to you some more. <laughs> Quick look. From round 18, upsets galore again. This is more to do, I guess, with the simple fact that each week we have quality teams. The ladder's uh, as close as it's ever been. As as we talked about, it's basically the closest it's been since 1997. Yes. So between two and basically the bottom of the ladder, there is very little essentially separating anybody. So, Except. Except what? The, the top. The top of the ladder. Yeah. No one cares about that at this point. <laughs> he does. He's, yeah. he's wearing all swans. He's got swans jocks on as well. So, no, I don't. Why are you looking at me there, man? <laughs> so you when know? we talk about upsets, it's quite literally, yeah. you go, Western Bulldogs are only two wins behind Carlton now. Yep. Yep. Uh, you talk about Essendon and the Melbourne Demons. That That's so only funny. two points separating them after that is sort this of ladder, upset. ladder check? This, we're going to get the ladder yeah. check. And then yeah. the Hawks and Freo is very similar as well. Yes. So, um, crazy weekend, though, because it was a lot of those teams at the very pointy end of the table, i.e. Carlton. Essendon and Fremantle that all did lose. Uh, Even Port too, they were in the ad at, the, at the start of the round. At the start they were. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, other news, Ross Lyon broke a phone. That, that was, was funny, funny. Yeah. yeah. He, he tried to fix it and he was laughing and a lot of Saints supporters were commenting, concentrate on the game, Ross. I was just slamming phones and we're down by 40. What I'm more about? concerned about the technological advances of our good friends over in South Australia. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, nah, it's all good, man. Just use the old dog and bone, bro. It's like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's bang. Just, Those old, the old school phones, that, are we the only sport or only thing yeah. in the world that still has them? Because NFL's NFL, yeah. what are we doing? Yeah, we don't, they, have, they haven't upgraded for the last 20 yeah, years. Yeah, but no, some coaches wear headsets, others prefer the phone. they got the a wire running yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> They're trying to yell out the window, but the, the, the wires are out rich. there with like two paper cups and a string. <laughs> just going, Clark goes just screaming into it. Boys, lift! And they're like, what? what? <laughs> you that. can just hear him from the box. That's it. Clark is yelling from the No box. one turns up to your game, so that oh, works. Tough ones, though. Injuries this week. Uh, Lots. We had a fair few for Port, which oh. is pretty not cool. They had a very fun game plan of doing the stupidest things humanly possible and also injuring themselves. Mm. And we had a bunch of concussions as well, specifically today, to Ranzo got concussed by Bedford. Uh, we had Liam Duggan concussed by a good bloke Charlie Ki- uh, Cameron. Yeah, can he get out of it again? That's the Maybe. big question. Uh, but also Port, they copped a bunch, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, Jones was concussed by Alex Davies. Marshall got a bit of friendly fire from Charlie Dixon. <laughs> comes you? back from v- like the Santafel and just goes, well, bang! Takes out his own mate, their, yeah. their best forward. What are you doing, Charlie? He's just trying to get a bit of job stability. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, well, Stats Boy is going to just punch Alex in the back of the yeah, head. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted. I'm off next week. What are you doing? Well, After really your take, intro, take I'm leaning towards you. <laughs> uh, my biggest injury was to Jed Walter's hair. Yes. Yeah, right. Got a haircut. Was that because school holidays and Dimmer just lined them up and shaved shaved the lids? Yeah, put a bowl on there. Yeah. They might have really? had uh, yeah, the hair rule. That I, didn't, do. I didn't like this at all. I'm just like, come on, man, Jed Walter. Like your power is in your locks. Samson. Well, it's 100% he only Samson. had one disposal with those uh, with the shaved head. So it's subbed out. What are you Gross. doing? Subbed out. Come on, Jed. What are you a, doing? jump on this show. B, what are you doing? Get the hair back. That's his so second one disposal game. That's a bit of a worry. And the other little bit of, uh, I don't know, around the grounds was the weird game at Marvel Stadium. Vic Metro. Oh, was this. A oh Vic, this was a bit Vic dodgy. Country. I, yeah. How was it dodgy? I just, there wasn't a free. So uh, Vic Metro were down with, I think it was about 10 seconds to go. Vic Country got a mark. They paid a free kick to Vic Metro. That was probably there. 
Then there was 50. I don't know why. It was for abuse. Oh, it was for abuse. It was a bit, I don't know. You can the hear, umpire has confirmed it. it was for dissent. Anyway, they got him right to the goal line. As they go to the goal line, goal after the siren, it just seemed a bit scripted. And then the AFL literally said, you can't script this. And all the comments are like, this feels scripted. It felt pretty <laughs> scripted. Yeah. But it's also it's like it's dissent. I'm just saying, yeah. you, you just know your audience over here, Stats Boy. Like Alex is the first one to go, Vic Bias! Vic Bias! <laughs> now we're talking Vic Metro Bias. Yes. That, well, that's <laughs> like what I mean. Country Victoria. We're like, Metro Bias! Vic Metro Bias! See! <laughs> like Andrew well, Gillen Dillon's on the phone, have Vic Country killed. <laughs> not that anyone really cares that much about it, but it was just uh, in the news I'll tell you what, those Metro Boys would care, right? Yeah, and their now. families. And, yeah, no, Metro won. So yeah, that's what I mean. They would care because they won. They were very All those They had a really cool Q. Indigenous kit actually today as well. Loved it. Those kits were actually, I Did really enjoyed them. Yeah. With the uh, boomerang on the front. Yeah. Right. Let's do it. Round 18. Ladder check. Check, yes. check, check. On top. The Sydney Swans, 56 points, 14 and 3. They're pretty good. Got I mean. 6% six per- six boost yesterday with the win. Yeah, they didn't really play anybody on the weekend. No, nah, so it's training it's okay. cards. Second, it's a team called Carlton. Actually tied up on points with the Geelong Cats. Both 11 and 6. The Blues have done a Swans and dropped two on the row, two in a row and now play North, which is kind Ooh. of weird. It's pretty funny, isn't it? The Very powerhouse. Strange. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> it's just like we're just playing our teams back into form, Stats yeah. Boy. I know. Whoop. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Yeah. Uh, Geelong, though, looked fantastic. I'll talk about that again later. They were awesome. Uh, in dealing with a Collingwood team that is... Flat tire. Yeah, you have to great. scroll down a lot for Collingwood. Yep. Uh, the live ladder at the moment. <laughs> Let's do it. This is fraught. Brisbane a fourth in yep. 42 points, 10, 6, and 1. Frio a 10, 6, and 1. Essendon a 10, 6, and 1. So you have three teams on 42 points. That's that is crazy. A it was one win behind second. Very funny, like uh, Essendon fans last night before the Melbourne game goes, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, we've got the drods. I'm like, yes, but so do Fremantle and Brisbane who are going to be right They're there They're still going to be above you. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, they're like, Oh, no. <laughs> Your percentage now matters. Yeah, the percentage actually 100% matters because you have GWS and Melbourne and Port all on 40 points with 10 wins and 7 losses. Yeah. Why is that crucial? Well, probably about three, four weeks ago, we kind of wrote off those three teams. Which, just, wait, which teams? Well, those three teams. G- or GWS, like probably a month and a half yeah, ago. They yeah. looked shocking. Okay. Melbourne, Melbourne they've been written off the yeah. last month. Yeah. Port, they've had these, like, obviously, Ken was basically on the edge of getting fired. Yeah. Now he's like, never tear us apart. I'm going to punch you in the head, Jason Horn Francis, he says. <laughs> these things, though, they are now sitting at 40 points. Talk about a scant one win away from second and ladder. So are these teams yeah. all the way down to nine. There's one win separating two it through is nine. Crazy. But being reactive Chaos. is fun. Tenth are the Western Bulldogs. They are the line of demarcation. They're nine and eight. Above 500. Equal yeah, with the Suns, yeah. right? They, so they go to and Geelong and Geelong next week, so nine and nine coming. Perfect. Here it is. <laughs> this is an absolute test of the – is this the dogs in Geelong? Yeah. Yes. Fascinating. Following Suns, week is Sydney and Sydney. Suns by GWS. It's going to be fascinating. So nine and eight, yeah. those two teams. The Suns, with Dimmer lighting a fire under them, very good response. Well, it doesn't matter if Dimmer lights a fire. They, they played at home, Jim. They played at home. It doesn't matter. Above the 28th parallel, nothing They won. They won. They still won. So. Yeah, the streak that's is why, alive. That's why the Dimmer thing, he should have saved it. He should have saved it. It's like, I'm going to fire the boys up. You're playing at home, Dimmer. What it are you doing? It's for them. So, so, so he at this should point. have saved it when they were going to West Coast in 100%. a couple of weeks. Fire them up then. Make sure they get oh, that I'm road I'm so win. tipping West Coast. <laughs> sure you will. In 12th, oh. the reigning premiers on 36 points as well because they are 8, 7, and 2. Oh, they're in a bit of mud. Crazy. Wait for it. Then you have Hawthorne in 13th, 9 and 8. Who plays each other next week? Who have That'd more be, wins? This might be an elimination final, as we are so, so, so quick to say at this time of year. Oh, you know, hey, boys, boys, guess what? You know, this one is. You know what this elimination one is? Final. Oh, it's an elimination final. Watch out. Hey, <laughs> one of these teams look at my finals. I'll tell you what. <laughs> It's an elimination final, boys! And they just lose it. And you're like, all right, just, it just calm down. But it honestly, but for Hawthorne and Collingwood going again against each other next week, you're falling behind the pack. Yep. It would be so funny if Collingwood had a third draw. No, it wouldn't. I want an eight point game. Yeah. I love that. Eight point game. There you go. I love I prefer an eight point game. It sounds sounds cool. It makes yeah. you sound way smarter. You go, oh wait, wait. So four minus Quick carry, maths, yeah. carry the seven. Oh juice. Uh in 14th, you have the Adelaide or Adelaide Crows. Oh. The Crom in, with 26 points, they're, they're done. We know that. St Kilda, yep. they got beaten by the Crom. Yeah. That was a bad game. 24. The West Coast Eagles. They're going to be 16th no matter what. Uh, and well, North, not after a few weeks, but that's okay. Watch out. Uh, West Coast, 
Look, they're three and fourteen. There was no dead coach bounce. They're, they're, they're they actually they just kicked the last two goals, and there's still ten minutes to go. No, I'm back in Brisbane. I can't believe we have to retake so this. The, the funny <laughs> thing, no, it will be. So okay. Brisbane don't win this. Brisbane will be uh, down at ninth, and Port Adelaide will be eighth. Yep. I think uh, it should and be regardless, right. West Coast stay in 16th. Yeah. Yes. So they could be 4 and 13 at the moment, 3 and 14. Yeah. Uh, no dead coach bounce for the moment, but, but I don't know. Simo was there flipping a coin. That was nice. And then he good. got changed. He had a kit change. Uh, North are in 17, 8 points, 2 and 15. And so are the Richmond Tigers. But you know why you're in 17th and not 18th, stats man? Percentage. Because the uh, Swans didn't kick straight. 1.1%. 1. 1%. Yeah. If the <laughs> Swans literally beat us by a couple more goals, we would have been cooked. 3 yeah. plays 63.2. And then we play West Coast and Richmond coming up uh, in the next month. So This game's a draw. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> Absolute chaos, though. Because I think the ladder check aspect of this looks at probably those teams, I want to say, from 7 through 13, you have essentially one win separating those teams. But yep. amazingly, it's a nine, win and a half from 9 fourth. through 10... Nine through ten, you have one win separating them as well. But four through thirteenth is a win and a half. Yeah, but That's I mean crazy. at the same time, two yeah. through thirteen is still close. Is only two wins. Yeah. yeah, it's nuts. It's ridiculous. It's an absolute chaotic season. Luckily, you're we're here to break it down apparently each week. <laughs> Vert Sush. Hey gentlemen. What's 15 metres? Stats boy is overestimating like height and uh, <laughs> distances at this point. So 15 metres, he's like, oh, it's from here to like Alex. Yeah, well, that's what the, um- no, the umpires think it has to be the other. You have to kick it 25 metres nowadays. Apparently. Or sometimes you can kick it eight. So yeah. I had some umpires on the weekend in my footy that couldn't okay, even see it. Okay, we don't, we don't pa- care about paying, your third division. No, I'm just saying they were paying uh, kicks that were exactly fit. That was spot on. That, they, AFL umpires don't know what 15 is and local footy umpires well, we, do. We I don't know understand that. they that. don't. Hmm. Don't understand. The vent sesh here... Is quite simply, maybe, just maybe, you can put your hand up before this and go, hey, AFL team, <laughs> just this week, we're going to have a little bit of a focus on the length of your kicks. Mm. Just FYI. Yeah. So don't flip out when we go, that was 13 metres, play on. Yeah. I'm completely fine. Or 20 metres. <laughs> I'm 100% fine with the umpires going, that was short. Play on. I'm yeah, all for it. It's, I think it's fun kicks, for the game as well. Chip kicks are a blood on the game. Yeah, I think move yeah. the ball, move the ball, move the ball, I move agree. the ball. Let's go. At the same time, to not just come out of the blue and go, we're going to crack down on this thing. It's like no one was complaining about this last no. week. No one. No one's ever cared No one ever it. cares about it, really. fixing things that are not broken oh, at some point. That's like, the AFL model. At the same time, yeah. Collingwood and Geelong, I th- oh. feel like, would feel very aggrieved mm. at some of the umpiring on Friday night. I but think some Collingwood 15, fans especially. 15 metres nah, goals were absolutely horrendous, and uh, we had a bunch of those. Hey, also, though, extra bonus vent uh, which <laughs> I was going to save possibly for why I can't stand, but this floating fixture. Uh, for round Alex, 24. you have vibes on floating fixture. Round 24 yep. is just chaos anyway. Yeah. But my biggest point at the moment is not so much the floating fixture but the release of the fixture and how we've gone, okay, we're going to really dig in and figure out what works. And then they come up with this absolute dog's breakfast for the rest yeah. of the season where in they the next few weeks- They get rid of weeks, Thursday night football. We get rid of <laughs> Thursday night football. We get that. But some of these clashes, some of these decisions where we're going, oh, we'll have Essendon and Adelaide Essendon, who this Friday Who thought that night. was a good idea? When, even when this was announced, I don't know why anyone was like, you know what would be a really good Friday night game? Essendon <laughs> and Adelaide. Nobody. Well, yeah. All right. Nobody. If Saturday you, night that yeah. week as well, you've got- so a weird. Richmond team playing Port. That is one of the more disappointing games mm. of the round. You've got Cats, Dogs. But that's, awesome. yeah, that, that's hidden against the Cats, j- dogs, the cats yeah. Dogs. I'm going to go that one. It is absolutely chaos. And you continue on down the line week on week on week. You've got another Saturday night clash where it's like a Demons GWS game, which is very, very, very good in terms of uh, ladder positioning, but is going to be brutal to watch. Mm. Whereas, come on. Give me a Q clash. Q, yeah, why is Q clash? Oh, but like four thirty five is like, technically push it on the Saturday night. Let's go. Yeah. But it's on it's on Foxtel for people who don't have free true, to wear true. unless you're in Queensland. But it's like next weekend, you've got the Swans playing the Lions at one ten on Sunday. Yeah, that's weird. That is absolutely ridiculous. That is so, weird. Gabba would be pumping at night. If they've looked at this. Well, even even the afternoon game. Mm. But like the we, Optus game is all right too. When we announce these fixtures, it shouldn't be so hard to go, look, crystal ball a little bit. Mm. Uh we're not letting Richmond play any more like primetime games. Yeah. Or St Kilda. You brought it upon yourself. Yeah, bottom We've four, got yeah. Enough really good teams this year just to go hammer and tongs and just 
allow it all to breathe. And at the moment, they're not doing it and it stinks. Is this when when I tell you that on August 2nd, there's two Friday night games? Oh, I forgot. It. I hate when they do that. They always Let's go. Oh, that's going to be a long and then <laughs> And then that weekend, you have Carlton Collingwood at 7.30 on the Saturday. At the same time, Port Adelaide and Sydney. Ooh. Which has got a massive, massive, massive ladder ram- ramifications. Yeah. And it's also Pendle's 400th. Yeah. You I'm can, not you, entirely convinced that the AFL fixturing system isn't actually just like 1,000 monkeys at 1,000 computers. I'm... Yeah. Prove me wrong, yeah. AFL. No. Prove me wrong. Remember when they rolled out that AFL fixturing bloke and they're like, why do you not do this? He's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> it just like started talking in windings. You're like, bro, what's going on? Did, uh, did he we did talk- He's job. talking like a sim. Sorry, I'm just- He's like, oh, my God, I'm going to go on gear. You're like, dude, AI's use pretty- words. AI is pretty powerful. What is going on? I'm just looking at the fixture here. Did you, men- did you mention that Richmond St. Kilda is a Sunday Free to wear game in a oh, couple of weeks. Oh, who Love thought that? that? Oh, bottom two Sunday, bottom eight thousand. Sunday, people August eleventh at Marvel Stadium. Richmond is the home team. Play St Kilda. I love that. I'm on holidays that week, so sucked in you two. I'm not watching <laughs> that. We, we're just gonna <laughs> skip that game. <laughs> oh it was my a draw, god! I think. Oh, I'll be checking all of. Them. At the same time, uh, Saturday night at the same time is Essen and Gold Coast at Marvel, and then you've got at the MCG. So there's a game at Marvel and the MCG at the same time. Both in Melbourne. You've oh. got Melbourne taking on Port. Like, what? What are we doing? What, what, we've got two stadiums in Melbourne. Why is the games on at the same time? Monkeys, typewriters. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Let's do some game wraps. Oh, my God. That's so bad. Round 18. Game wraps, game wraps, game wraps. Let's do it. Friday night. Remember that one? Collingwood, yes. 71, 91. The Geelong Cats. The Cats controlled this game. They look fantastic. There was probably – and, like – Twitter is a fantastic place when the Pies lose. Oh, yeah. Same oh, as when Carlton lose. I don't know chaos. if Twitter and fantastic place can be no, no, put no, into it's a... Fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I hate Twitter. Uh, the thing is, Collingwood, they do just look... I think we talked about this, like, what, a week ago? Mm. Like, the tipping point for injuries, they hit that like a month ago. Yeah. And it's, like, to be honest, they probably hit that when Nathan Murphy retired. I did say yeah. that at the start. Yeah. It's just yeah. like... It and just Darcy takes Moore a, forgot how to play footy. Takes a giant chunk out of your defence... All Australian level defender and just a massive part of your premiership team. Your lockdown defender. Gone. Yep. And it's all falling apart. Added to that, my check gone. Jamie Billy Elliott came back, was really good. Yeah. It was good. Great. Schultz, he also got, concussed. I want to say, hurt. Yeah. He got concussed. concussed. Yes. He, he and Tom Stewart had a head clash. So I want to know how Tom Stewart passed his concussion test and Lockie Schultz didn't, given they like clashed the Lockie foreheads. Schultz has a massive head as yeah, well. Yeah, Schultz has a huge bounce. <laughs> like, it's bigger than his head. Tom Stewart, It actually looks like Tom these Stewart. Heads. Tom Stewart, headband, yeah. more hair. I'm just saying, cushioning. <laughs> headband. I mean, to be honest, he got him right in the face, like yeah. right on the front of the face, not his actual hair yeah. or anything. But maybe that's just, you know, what is it, crumple zone? But it was very funny when they, like, when <laughs> yeah. they, when they said to Chris Scott after the games, oh, what do you think about Tom Stewart? I was like, I don't ask. <laughs> just, is that what he said? Yeah, he's like, I don't well, that's, know. That's just a silly thing for a coach. To All right, Stats, you got some other stats, man? Uh, well, hey, Stats, man, get any other stats for There's us. no other stats, man, under uh, me. Uh, cats won the center clearances 16 to 6, So, which is very right. rare for the Cats this year. They've lost clearances almost Danger every game. Danger substantially better. Tom Danger Stewart was awesome. in the center as well. Tom Stewart in the so. middle. I think we even called that on the podcast, so he's been awesome in Maxie there. Holmes. I just want to talk about Darcy Moore. A lot of people have talked about him the last couple of weeks. The dumbest decision uh, Collingwood ever did. They were in the game. He went to Tyson Stengel in the second half. No, no, no. He didn't do that in the second half. He was on him all game. No, I think the first quarter. I, 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 I vividly remember it in the second half. So it could be, yeah, it could be earlier. But the fact that he was on him, it's a, that's a massive mismatch for uh, Darcy Moore. He can't keep up with the pace but, of Stengel. But Stengel's. it's not that. It's so the fact dumb. that Darcy Moore, who's similar height yeah. of Jezza, has the athleticism of Jezza. Yeah. like, hey, hey, Isaac, I, I know you're a foot smaller than Jezza yeah. and you can't jump. Go play also, on Also, Quainer literally could keep up with the – he's so fast, yeah. like Stengel. I've got no idea why Craig, Fly let Craig that happen. Craig yeah. McRae is just like light years ahead. He's the smartest coach we've oh, ever seen. So. Yeah. I don't know if it was his fault. I think Darcy well, Moore yes. was Well, it would have been. Just, uh, yeah, crap. Darcy pants. Moore, though, has been horrendous mm. most of this year. And I know Colin fans are like, no, it's, it's, it's our midfield spot. Like, the no, ball's I, still coming in and he's not defending and he can't kick straight. Mm, so. so that didn't help, yeah. Not ideal. Uh, mm. Also, uh, Geelong – just took Collingwood's one wood away from them. They were just like, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to chip, chip it, it around, around and hold the footy so you can't get near it. 145 yeah. marks to 75. Jeez. That comes down to what you did say comes about fly coaching. Rate. Yeah, but even the fact that they weren't pressing at all. They, like Geelong in the last quarter, we're just going chip, 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 chip. Not as, one as, Collingwood player was pressing up. As someone who had Tom Stewart's over on disposals, I Yeah, perfect. It. Exactly. It was a pretty remarkable – there was like – there was just a different – like a point of that game where they're like, uh, you're not going to have the ball anymore. Yeah. yeah. 
Check this that out. Was, it was like the Essen, whole last To be honest, like Melbourne did the exact same thing to Essendon yeah. as well. And you're like, oh, well, that's pretty good yeah. if you just do that. Not so bad. I think it, we, we say the words, oh, the mini elimination final, but Collingwood next week against Hawthorne absolutely is mm. after this performance. Awesome. Uh, how are the two fan bases feeling after this one? The Cats are up and about because they're in third. They're all of a sudden like, we're back. What, what about that bad month? We're back. Yeah, they, they just had a bit of a blip and yeah. they always go they're over like, some of you. We're going to be there, I guess? Cool. Mm. Yeah, look, to be honest, this is one of those things where you go, yeah, maybe don't overreact so much to June yeah. losses and maybe May losses. It's okay. Yeah. This is also why you win your first seven games and you feel okay. You yeah. still be it was third. like the Giants. Exactly. Uh, the Con- Pies fans, look, they're worried. They're sad. I, I had some, I saw some mates on the train that go for the uh, Collingwood. They were like, we're not making finals. They, they've lost all belief. They're like, oh, we won a flag last year. That's all right. That's it. They're just taking those 2023 20, memories to be. You shouldn't yeah. be going out of the finals if you've just won the flag. But they're all, yeah, but they're also like trying to rub it. Oh, sucked in Cotton fans. We have a flag. It's like, cool. It's <laughs> last year. Oh, no, they still. That's Carl, a that's Carl a good just, argument. Carl like, in their head. I think Carlton yeah. would, t- would take. No, a no, flag. no. But what I mean is, is that that's their go-to for anything at the moment. Yeah, it's like, yeah sucked in Carlton. It's like, yeah, sure. They've sure. got a fair argument. I think. Saturday down in Tassie. What happens there? Weird stuff. Awesome stuff. Weird Sicily things, kicking three. Weird things happen <laughs> weird. in Tassie, like James Sicily going, "Wait, I can't play defense because I can't tackle. This sucks. Swing me forward, coach." And he's like, "Oh yeah, do that." <laughs> says Sam Mitchell. James Sicily goes forward, wins the game. Eighty-seven, seventy-four. The oh. Hawks win this game. It was insane. Yeah. My big question here is, does he love Tassie? He loves Tassie. I, yeah, I put that in there. I was like, surely he loves Tassie. He's kicked three snags. He's at his career high. I need to check that, actually. Let's no, have a quick don't know. But anyway, he was he was up and about. He, he was pro Tassie. But also, Hawthorne have created a very good home advantage down there. Of all the very loud, raucous 8,000 people. Yeah. Well, they're all in the uh, Devils. They're, they're like, oh, stuff all. No, but the vibe was awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't get still loud, the vibe yeah. rocked. Yeah. It was, I loved it because this is what, Law- Utah's, right? So Lawn mm-hmm. says. Would have been freezing. <laughs> would have been really cold, but it also would have been really, really cool. Yeah. So I enjoyed fun that. game. It was just like a really fun, rollicking match where what? Momentum the wizard, swings. The Wizard wins the game, basically seals the game at the end. Stat, stats boy is like most I hated, like him. I most hated that, enemy. I literally said the other week I like him. I just said he needs to stop over-celebrating. But he deserves I mean, to he over- can celebrate all he wants. He can celebrate yeah, exactly. all he wants. He did the ice in his veins. I like that. I said the other week uh, that we need more celebrations in the game. So good on the Wiz for kicking the match-winning goal. Love a good ice in the veins. Uh, outside of this, though, like Frio... You could sort of see this one coming, right? They're, up, they're feeling great. Yeah. So much is going right. And if, when they're I say good. you could have seen it coming, I mean, I tipped them. You didn't. So I, 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 I tipped Hawthorne. So. <laughs> yeah, I, def- I, uh, I tipped Freya, yeah. But this is just one of those ones. It's a big test. you got to travel all that way. You know that Hawthorne are going to be hard at the ball. That's yep. kind of what they do. They just have these random games where they're just like, hey, we're pretty good. Last week wasn't it. This week, this week it we'll was. just bounce back, yeah. And like Freo without uh, Big Sean Darcy, they're like rolling out Luke Jackson, played really well. But by the same token, they just didn't control the game like they had in no. the past month or so. And the Hawks just put up a fight. It was awesome. I enjoyed it. Yeah, this Hawks game. were harder at the ball, I'd say. Sarong was really good. Frio as well, 10 14. They had a lot more scoring shots, but yeah, you got to finish your snacks. Finish your, it's your awesome. Next. They just, it's a super long trip. They've been up, they've had a couple of good wins. I know that really good yeah. win against Sydney, the settling win against Richmond. It's like, Oh, this work feels slightly unknown. And it's now. not a bad loss because, like, Hawks, we actually like, – With the ladder right it up is. There. With the ladder it is, but in, in terms of oh, – oh, you could actually see Hawks uh, winning that game. So yeah, Especially oh, when you tipped them. I mean, them, I but, tipped them. But I was, yeah, 50-50. But one. what I mean is if they win, they're sitting second right now. Mm. That's right. That's a tough one. It is a, That's why when we talk about the why – if how are the fan bases feeling? Freo, this is an opportunity missed where yeah. Yeah. they definitely could have – could have won this game, should have won this More game. More belief in yeah. top four, yeah. And away they go. But yeah. like Warple had 24 touches, Will Day 24, Connor Nash, Carl, Carl Amon. Like it was those dudes as well yeah. that you just saw heaps of and it was really, really good. Yep. I enjoyed this them, game. Yeah, they're mid tell. So this, you did. This you were very excited, right. yeah. Kalsha Deer popped up. And yeah, like when that, he kicked a goal, I was like, Jim's happy. I they like were, watching him play Kalsha They Deer. were like really struggling. I think um, Frio had gotten up pretty handily, right? And then suddenly they just went bang, bang, bang and mm. they were right back in it and it completely turned the game on his head. But this game, if you look at the score, yeah. Snake, it just does a roller coaster. It's awesome. <laughs> I love this game. Uh, Hawks fans, we could probably just throw this to social guy Leo. Yeah. Who we've not heard from since. Yeah. <laughs> True. I'll see him at the Euros party. Yeah. We'll, I'll have to so he's him. been drinking all weekend. He's going to roll into the uh, Football Today <laughs> so live just stream. Think about Rick morning. Ross, but make him small and like Mini a social Afro guy. Fan. Small, apparently. Yeah, just like just make him really. He's just like shot, 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 shots, fighting alligators in yeah. like you know 
Flor- Floridia swamps. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Leo's been doing. Yeah, yeah probably. Been, yeah. I love it. So Hawks fans will be up and about, and they say, should be. And they're this like, bring on, they're like, bring on Collingwood, bring it There's on. There's a little bit of belief from Hawks 100%. fans now because I saw Leo post one hundred percent that they can make finals. Big call of the week. They will beat Collingwood yeah. this week. I'm on board. Oh, yeah. Sydney smash North Melbourne. This is the barn me bet game. No, I, we did not agree to a barn me. That, I, that is I a bad to, bet for I me. I agreed to it in my brain. I wasn't uh, even here. I basically put you against each other in my brain. All right, so you are you are who would cover? Who would cover? This yeah. would Sydney cover the line? They very easily did. Stats while you are in a sense. No, I definitely yes. don't. One thirty-eight fifty-nine. This was just over in the second quarter. Yeah. Packer up, boys. Dunchkies. Mm. Alex, take it away. Yeah, you uh, can talk about. Okay, it. Yeah. I don't want to talk about. It. Well. <laughs> First of all, Toby Pink taking a mad grab in the uh, first quarter. I have a up. timer as okay. well. Okay. You, <laughs> you beat North Melbourne, team 17 on the ladder. You have a Wait, two powerhouse North Go. Melbourne. Okay. Thank you very much. Swans, good to see them actually bounce back and get a good win on the board. Yep. 20 goals, 18. Bit annoying, but anyway, they've won the game, won it easily. Uh, the idea of Clark again, Chad Warner and Errol Goulden are good. We're just going to let them do what they want. Probably wow, not the best idea. That's in my uh, why I can't stand 41 it Forty-one touches yeah. for Errol. Warner had thirty and two. Probably could have had six goals if he kicked straight. Logan McDonald played awesome. Absolutely smashed. I think he was on eight at core. Kicked four goals. Got yeah. about a few more. Yeah, core's Pap- been really good last month as well. So. Papley kicked four. Grundy said, "Hey, Tristan Cherry, I'm going to get up for this game. Dominate him." Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke Parker is never playing VFL ever again. He came on as the sub and was the number one rated he player was so on the good. ground yeah. straight away in yeah. a quarter and a half. Yeah. He yeah. had Gnarly. four tackles cool. in thirty seconds. Yep. Uh, Thirteen touches. Just two goals. Uh, the Swans just started taking on some smart options through the midfield, but actually weren't too Hollywood like they've been a few times, but chose the right option. Right option yeah. Uh, I thought for the Ruse, LDU was awesome. I thought he was great yeah. all day. He was dangerous. I saw people saying Sheezel was good. He was not. He was horrendous. I know he had 29 touches. Yeah, he didn't have- he had a couple of moments where he was like, uh, ah! Yeah. And it's like just yeah. absolute panic. And same it. with McKercher. And he did not like it when the Swans were getting into him, especially Papley, which, you know, fair. I'd want to punch Tom Papley if he didn't play it for him. Yeah, I agree. Uh, North Melbourne did kick a really sick goal in the second quarter. Ran the whole, like, left. Yeah. Yow to you bursting out. Like, it was... That side of the future, I know we got smashed, but just those little little signs. It's, little that, signs. it's that one thing. That, that guy in the second quarter was sick. And uh, two was minutes right quick. Well. Let's uh, the Swans could have won by 130. If yes. they kicked straight, there was not one bad player on the ground. Justin McInerney's PCL means he is out. Isaac Heaney is in. Um, sweet. Good that's stuff. Boy. Oh, that's Reflections. enough. Look, uh, yeah. North, it was that month we've had. Really good month. And then it's like, coming. Alex it. called it. And Flat then game. literally the next month is really tough fixture. So we're just going to get through this month. It'll be a bit sad for a bit. And then we play West Coast and Richmond. There so we'll be so how the two fan bases are feeling? Happy, sad. Yep. Done. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not sad. I'm not sad. Carlton, 186. <sighs> this game didn't Jim. happen. Adelaide, hey, St. Kilda. Uh, <laughs> two minutes. Uh, actually, we'll give you two and a half because no, this, this is a big game. This is easy. So this was a weird, weird, weird game for the simple fact where the Blues – and stats, on, stats Boy and I were talking about yes. this before uh, we taped, right? The simple fact we went through every single stat. Carlton won all major statistical battles. Oh, yeah. You every get, single one. Contested nine possessions, clearances, yeah. absolutely every single one if it wasn't tied. Yep. And they never looked in control of this game. Yep. Not once. It was, well, maybe basically the end of the first quarter, but I mean, what? They'd started 0-7. Yeah, dogs were kicked on dogs seven. Because the dogs couldn't hit the mm. side of a barn. So it was just a strange, weird game where – Buku Kamas and Rory Lobb. At one point, I'm like, has Rory Lobb done anything? And then for the next quarter and a half, just started dominated. Marks, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty good. I'll pay that. Bond had a quiet game, and they still delete him. Then Trelaw was out before this with like calf awareness, and uh, they still had plenty of link up. Ed Richards, Tom Liber- Liberatore, like they just looked wicked, mm. absolutely wicked. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever Bailey's out there at the moment, Dale, Dale, Dale. he was everywhere. <laughs> Dale, it's like, Dale, is Dale. it Williams? Is it? It's not Smith. We know that. But no, it was da- Bailey Dale was good. Yeah. Jamara was awesome in the second half. Uh, mm. Harry went absolutely MIA in the second half. Kicked three goals. I'm like Harry McFive. We're up and about. You gotta throw his bullet. But <laughs> but you know, Gerald. He's like, Poor, Harry never kicks yeah. five. Uh, but my biggest thing to take away from this is Patrick Cripps was absolutely fantastic. Oh, in game I feel so bad for him. Why? Because he, he, he had, what he had? Two goals, he tried. 28 disposals, yeah. 11 clearances, eight tackles, <laughs> and the rest of his team's like, stuff you, Skipper. We're not going to get a win for you. Get lift. Charlie Curdo just forgetting how to kick a goal. Like, what are you doing? So, not good enough. Outside of that, Cripps, massive game. The biggest thing is they can't play two rucks. They're three and five now when mm. Pido plays this year. Three and five. Get him out. What's Carlton's record? How many losses have you had? Six. Oh. So it's literally every game that he's played and then – They've essentially they've lost. There's where the losses have come. Okay, and there's an extra one, right? 
And it's the exact same way they lose each time he does play if they lose, right? Yep. So they, he played in the Richmond game. They yep. smashed Richmond. But it was Richmond. That's fine. That's where you bring Pito back. You go, we don't have too many problems winning this game. Yeah. For the I Bulldogs, agree. you don't need it. You it's Tim English. Yeah. What's he going to dominate you? Probably not. No, he hasn't been It's okay. Good this year. And what happens when you play Tom DeConing as a solo ruck is that you can basically have another mid. Well, you've essentially got another midfielder because you've got TDK. But it means you can play someone like George Hill or Matthew Kennedy behind the ball. Perfect. And just sort of give the likes of Mitch McGovern, Adam Saar, just ne- another defensive mid. I was about to say, to work off can you just see how it's worked with the Swans with Brady Grundy this exactly. year? The Swans have not. Like, Brady, yeah, yeah, you do your thing. McLean five percent. It's it works. And the thing is, like it was oh, it means clearances, Pino clearances. They're three and five when he plays. Yep. You know what's more important is than clearances? Three, is it winning? winning the are, game. are they three and five when it's Pito and TDK playing together, or just three TDK, and five with Pito in it's general? Three and five just with Pito, Pito yeah. playing. playing, but TDK I think has played all of those bar one or two. So okay. it's like the combo just doesn't work. Nah. And but, if look, Harry Mackay looked awesome last week when he just like Cool. We've got two dudes. I'm going to kick five. Check this out. Yeah. Outside of that, though, actually not last week because he he kicked five against GWS yep. and they lose that game. But against Richmond, Pito was in that game and boom. Point being, defensively, when they it's the same story each time the Carlton lose. They lose to GWS, gave up 116 points. Yep. Gave up 100 to the Dogs when they lost. 30 to the Swans. When, well, they that- gave, when they lost to the Swans, it was 117. Mm. When they lost to Collingwood, it was 85. Gave up 118 to Geelong. I lost to Adelaide, and that's the one that still sticks in my brain the most because they were like, oh, two rucks, check this out, and they lose by two, they give up. But Adelaide don't even have a ruckman. They always no. give up 100 points in a loss. It's basically the defense yeah. just goes absolutely MIA, they lose the game. But is it the def- Is it that the defense or is it also, is it also the mids, transition yeah. and the mids not yeah, working hard enough? Because I remember that Swans game. Exactly. The transition was was cutting you up. That's why That's why the dogs are so good. There's got well, so it, many guys I think what it is, is that you have – when you have TDK, it means you can, in transition, you can always have that extra person, that Kennedy, yeah. that Hewitt player, just hanging out going, oh, Sam Walsh is running that way because he's not running this way. Yeah. Check this out. And away they go. But I think you got some easy fixes. Zach Williams goes out with a mm. pinged hammy. It yeah. like. Lower, Jack lower Martin. body injury, exactly. Jack Martin. Jack Martin comes straight in for him. You could probably be – I think they rushed Cottrell back, which seemed weird, and he's been off his tucker for the last two weeks since yeah. he's coming back. Uh, Chicago's basically taken his role and just yeah. like run with it. And he's been fantastic. So yeah, as you can tell, the fan bases, Carlton, just <laughs> I was gonna say we probably should talk a little bit about the dogs. These, I think, for Carlton, this is like yeah. two losses you could probably afford to have at that exact moment. But I think that loss. But you want to win that. There game. was so much confidence from Carlton going into this yeah. undermanned Western Bulldogs team because the Bulldogs, it was just. Work rate. It yeah. was pure yeah. work rate. And we're like, why and can't they, you do this? This is why. Like, they just do it every second week, though. But, yeah. They got smashed by Port last oh, week. Yeah. And you're like, what was that team versus this team? It's every week. And that's it's what different. I mean. No no Norton, no uh, Trelaw. Uh, Trelaw coming out late. And someone else is out too, Jones. Yeah. And it's like three of probably their most important players when you think about it, aside from the Bonds. And you're like, they're still good. Why yeah. can't you do this every week? And this is why everyone who doesn't go for the Western Bulldogs hates them. Yeah. That said, if Charlie Kerno had a kick straight, Carlton win. Three goals, seven. Yeah, what are you doing, Charlie? How are the fan base is feeling? Dog fans just like, <sighs> can we just on. do this I every know. week? And God. The, they will be happy, though. They didn't rely on the bond. Like, yeah. usually when they win, the bond has to have 40 oh, touches. Yeah, some dude gave he didn't us, even play that well. Some, some dude, dude gave us a spray about not talking about Bond's Brownlow credentials. I don't think he's got a vote in the last I've month. I've been doing that. That's <laughs> no, all I've been doing. I'm all by all the time. I, have I just well. think he hasn't got a vote in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, probably not. The Dogs fans, I was literally speaking to one today, and it's like, yep. Didn't Do it expect next week. it, but this is great. Can we just keep it going? <laughs> next all week, is, again, all so, and Carlton play north, so we're feeling it right. Western Bulldogs next two is Geelong and Geelong, Sydney and Sydney. Mm. Adelaide, St Kilda, I watched seventy-one this. thirty-nine. Who watched this? I watched. I watched it this morning. I watched. Yeah, I watched a little bit of it because uh, I watched bits and bobs of this, and I was just like, just Whoa, ugly. It was just ugly. So <laughs> this sucked. That is the nicest way to put it. This game sucked. Um, it got continually suckier. They are the suckiest bunch of sucks to ever <laughs> suck, and we got to stop because our wiener kids right next to us. That's guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh. That weaner kid. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, more importantly, the thriller. The thriller is back. Oh, he he's talk. jacked and he has a yeah. beard <laughs> and he's awesome. Yeah, he's the new Jed Walter because no, he looks cooler look, than Jed Walter. He's now. in my top three Jed Walters. <laughs> <laughs> the most Jed Walters to have ever Jed Walter. You know, I've been on thrill th- the thrill thought yeah, bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, I basically be sitting up there just going, boys, you in? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, right up the I've front. I've been on board ding, the whole ding, time. Ding, yeah. I love thrill thought. So the Saints, it says here that used to the rain, but they were just. They were on no, top I in the first I, quarter. I said they're not used to the rain because yeah. they they can only play well if the roof's what, closed at Marvel. But That's what I mean is, is they were on top in the first quarter mm. while it was raining, yeah. 
And then they kicked a goal at some time early in the second quarter with, I think it was about 12 minutes left in the second quarter. They kicked one goal for the rest of the game and it was an awesome goal by the Poo. Yes, it was. They were just horrendous. There is no other way to put it after such a good win against the Swans last week. You dish up this turd. It's St Kilda. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. Yeah. They'll raise your hopes and then dash them quite They just have so many guys that get like eight disposals or less. And you're like, Dan Butler, you're supposed to be good. Why no, you always, he's not. He's like, a myth. He, he's supposed to be good. Supposed to. Yeah. Like, he used to be really good. Like for like two years. When? when was Dan Butler he, he good? Went, oh, all right, I'm not even going to argue that. Dan Can I just point get out? Get to him in the comments. Dan Butler was good for Riley like Bonner was horrendous for St Kilda. He shouldn't be there in the team. There were three yeah. direct mistakes that he made that led to Adelaide goals. And in a game that's 10 goals to five, not good. He, I think he's close to the most turnovers. Uh, we have talked about this game yeah. for way too long for 14th versus 15th. Uh, yeah. But the same Adelaide time. Adelaide at least. St Kilda hilarious. Time. Adelaide. They're, they're sure. just like, thank God we beat St yeah. Kilda because they and would have burnt the joint down. Back, so that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, fan bases, Saints fans are like, come on, man. Are you serious? <laughs> 39 imagine, points. But imagine after the second half they had against the Swans last week exactly. to, then like, sit in, oh. to then sit down and watch that. I know. In Adelaide. It just, at least it wasn't at home, I guess. And the Crom, they're just like, does this mean Matthew Nix is still our coach next year? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> then the big but, one. The thriller's back. Yeah. The big one. I went to this. Melbourne, Essendon. This was great. Melbourne pull out the win, 84-67. How did they do that? This was without Gorn, without Petrarca. Oh, I need to find uh, something. Without Van Royen kicking a goal, which the corollary of when he kicks a goal and their wins is absolutely bang on. He didn't, and away we go. So, Alex, you were there. Take us through it. Uh, Essendon fans before the game were like, oh, we, we just have to win this. We <laughs> yeah. just, that was the feeling. Nervous, like, How are you yeah. feeling? Like, oh, we should win. And I was like, it'd be the most Essendon thing ever. And you know what? Essendon did the most Essendon thing ever. Hmm. Uh, they dominated the first quarter of this game. Probably should have been up by four or five goals, yet we're only up by a goal or so. Then in the second quarter, Dees went, you know what? It's just raining sideways. We're going to get the footy and we're going to kick it really long to our small dudes who are fast. And that worked for them all night, whereas Essendon kept trying this handball chip, they chip, chip stuff. They weren't playing wet weather conditions. No, it, was it was shocking. so cold and wet, and mm. they just would not kick the footy. I thought for Essendon, Nick Martin was great, kicked four goals at 26 disposals. Yeah. But you look at Essendon's night. They won the uh, hitouts by 15 because Melbourne didn't have Ruckman. They lost the clearances by 12. Yeah, They oh, won the inside 50s and got smashed. It's just the little dudes like Cozzy, Ed Langdon, Melksham all night that were just dangerous around the footy. Yeah. So Sam Draper had 16 touches in the first half. Yeah. Finished the game with 20. Yeah. That, Come on. That feels Sammy right. right. And that's like, so when you look Peter at- Peter like, Wright got subbed out. Ruckcraft. You're like- It is tough. Maybe this conditions. is like some really good coaching by Simon Goodwin. Props where props are due. I'm just going- I don't, don't really rate Sam Draper as a ruckman. No, he's not. Maybe he's not we that don't good, really need somebody to yeah, actually maybe, play a ruck. Yeah, right? Maybe. What do you reckon? Well, Some fool in no, you just take the week <laughs> off anyway, man. Like, it's cool. It's a good point. It's like, oh, I'm not really afraid the, of Sam Draper. And boom, look what happened. The D's simply out toughed them. Yeah. That's that, what it was. It was work rate yeah. and toughness. I think it also came down to the, I wrote down here, the depth. Like Langdon hasn't been that good this year. He was he was really good a couple of years ago. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. He was everywhere. He was everywhere. Just like Langdon and Rivers were their leading disposals. You'd go. No track, no Oliver at his base. He still had 25. But Oliver, Oliver was not, good. No, nah, he was He good. was great, but he was not at his like 30 plus best. I debate great. There was a couple of moments where you're like, what the yeah. hell was that? Yeah. But he was at least yeah. at the contest all the time. And but, he was just, he was and just yeah. getting the footy and just banging it forward. <laughs> follow up efforts as yeah. well. I'm like, that's the best I've seen him in a little yeah. while. So happy day. Can confirm seeing him up close. Nate Caddy rules. I love that. He's good, yeah. He's, Absolutely he's on board. third on my list of Jed Walters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Ben Mackay was really good for us. And if it wasn't for him, they would have got absolutely mm. smashed. Jake Stringer must have signed a new contract because he went missing. Of course he yeah, went missing. He's on the down low, he's already signed it. And it's just like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to have some beers <laughs> on the really, bench. It'd really suck if you had him as an anytime yeah. goal kicker in your same game. Oh, yeah. lost by handsome man was. Kyle Langford was very good too. A couple awesome. of good moments. Uh, fan bases, how are they feeling about these demons? Are just like, wait, we're still in with the chance. No, <laughs> Let's go. Wait for Winning the flag. <laughs> uh, Gerald, can you please insert "Hello Darkness," my old friend, for Essendon fans? <laughs> yeah, that's I, don't, I don't think we've got the right. Spot. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hello Darkness, <laughs> my old friend. Hey, that sounds too good. We're gonna get copyright. <laughs> <laughs> that's li- I played that to my good friend Griffin, who's an Essendon fan. Uh, Halfway through the last quarter, when uh, Bailey Fritch waltzed in for a running banana, <laughs> he decided to leave. <laughs> that was like. Why do we always do but this? But then what about when they try to kick like three quick goals? It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. They would they nearly did the funniest thing ever. They nearly Essen well, yeah. Well, they, they still, still did, but yeah. Still did. Yeah. <laughs> they nearly full blown Essen did. Ah, uh, you never go full blown Essen. And the fan base is like, as you explain, like that my brother in law and his brother in law were I, I get at you. Yep. this game. 
Uh, one's a Demons fan, the other one a Bombers fan, and just like I would have given almost anything just to watch them like just deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> because they would have both life. hated it. Yeah, like, yeah. But then the Demon supporter would have just been like just so up in the face yeah. of the my brother-in-law. Bit. I would have loved it. So uh, conflicting feelings, I think, for Essendon fans going, are we really going to do this again? We could have been second. Oh. Yeah. that's That was the funniest thing. Going into this game, they were, they were all in the bar in the MCC going, ah, sucked in, cunt. Ah, we're going to be second after Frio we win. lost by this point yeah. as well. So Essendon have the chance to go second outright. Maybe they saw both of them like, Oh no! So there okay, was a, a, a funny like so. Uh, Broden from uh, whatever what's his show called the Footy with Broden. Yeah, he tweeted out Essen could be second after this, and I'd left halfway through the last quarter going Essen and were insipid. You know, once again proving to us they're pathetic. The Twitter timeline has somehow it magically said together, yeah. Broden's thing with Essen could be second, and mine straight under is like ah. Footy Twitter. And he purposely did. He's a big Melbourne supporter. So, that's yeah. so he, he's he's just definitely uh, Alex jinxed him. Yeah. doesn't jinxed get jokes. Well, I also don't pay <laughs> He didn't know attention. he goes for Melbourne. Yeah, I didn't fair. know that, actually. But he's just gone and jinxed them yeah. uh, quite expertly. They are. It's almost like, I don't know, me just saying how great Essendon is. Actually, I, I said they were going to win by 50, so maybe oh, I jinxed them. I'll tell you what, that's in my old mate, no mates for later. <laughs> I got a lot of people sending that to me. Yes. Sunday! Where was this game? Gold Coast, Port Adelaide? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Above the 28th parallel. What the result surprise. being Gold Coast win. 98 82. This uh, was their second win ever against, I believe, the yeah. Port Adelaide Correct. Powers. Ever. Their first win ever was against Port. 2011. Amazing. 14 straight uh, losses to Port yeah. Adelaide. But because this year they're like, we don't lose enough. Shout matter. out to our Did This Ones Been Give Us Crazy Like This Theory ever since I've paid attention to it. I can't stop. Unimpeachable. <laughs> Unimpeachable. Literally, they could play, they could play Sydney yeah. right now and that would, that would be a matter. Yeah, probably. Get them to play Sydney in like Hong Kong. They're winning. <laughs> oh, let's go. Because it's above. above. No, because we figured out that Gold Coast had lost two games in China, so they can't. Yeah, that's not this year though. But it's not the 28th. Ah. This year. This year. Ah, this year okay. It was it's against Port only. actually. They're, yeah, I know. Uh, rest of this one, Malcolm Roses with that uh, dog elbow. That wasn't good. Do, do you... Like, do you get two weeks for the elbow and then another two weeks two on top weeks for being, being just a jerk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, why is he why is he helping up? He's just walking around like this. <laughs> Who walks around? That's 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 why he walks around the office. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just showing off his <laughs> traps. Like, <laughs> out of whack. <laughs> I love it. Just throwing elbows. Yeah, I might actually start doing, I might start doing that. Uh, Jason Horn Francis was off his head. He, uh, like, literally. He, he gave away he 50s. He was 100% at Hollywood Showgirls last night. He was still pissed. <laughs> he, he, he looks so off. Uh, uh, Ken sat him down. He's just like, hey. You're Calm right. down, mate. Are you good? No, I'm <laughs> dead. I'm like, not. <laughs> I was out all night at Shooters. My drinks were seventeen dollars. He's not beating the uh, brat allegations since he left North Melbourne. So yeah, thanks, he, for, thanks for not staying, mate. Sorry, Ken Hinckley <laughs> and uh, Jason Horn Francis having like the troubled, father son, yeah. the troubled teen, well, and the dad is like a great vibe. Well, Ken had to do it. <laughs> this is a TV show for me, I reckon. <laughs> Footy dads. But he had to go. <laughs> he had to do. I think we could butters. get Jason Horn Francis, and we could it's like get dance moms, and Ken Hinckley. We could get Harley Reid and. Oscar Allen. <laughs> Footy dads, they live together. Oh, I'm your dad, son. It's like, shut up, you're not my real dad. I love this. We're going deep, boys. Sons, who are we going? It's Dimmer and Jed Walter, you little beauty. This is going to be like a Wednesday segment. Yeah. This, this is a Wednesday be, segment. Great. I'm going to build this out for Wednesday dads. show. I'm Footy dads. Gonna I'm going to have one for every, every <laughs> time. Who's, who's I'm going to explain swans? the show. God, it's going to be Oh, good. the Swans is going to be Errol as the teacher's pet. 100%. Yeah. All right. Other stats, stats, man. You got some points? Uh... Yeah, I would, actually, the one that I wanted to talk about, Travis Boak finally got his first goal of the year after 16 straight behinds. So he, the commentators kept going. I think he kicked two behinds yeah. today as well. They were like, he's done it again, Boak. He used to be a great goal kicker. He used to come off like half forward. Yeah. This year, he just forgot how to kick, and he finally got a goal. There was a bit of relief on his face, so that was a little bit funny. Uh, yeah, then Port were just wounded with injuries. I think this could have been really close if they didn't have three injuries. Uh, the Todd even Marshall Jack, one's the one that hurts the most. Todd right? Marshall, because like, Charlie Dixon doesn't like play dead. football anymore. Charlie Dixon probably should be in the twos, uh, and he's taken out his their best forward in Tom Marshall. So I Charlie, you say that to Charlie Dixon's face. I would never say that to Charlie Dixon, but he's and a Charlie, you should be in the two. <laughs> he's the biggest. But the funny thing girl. is now, Charlie's going to go. Like, remember Stats Boy, and there's like a smash cut to his funeral. He's like, yeah. <laughs> He, he died the way he lived. Hating Charlie Dixon. Talking crap to Charlie Dixon. <laughs> there you go. But it's also Charlie Curto's now made sure he's getting a game next week. Georgie Artis is back from suspension, mm. and Charlie's like, well, guess you have Charlie to pick Dixon me did. if Todd's yeah. injured. Yeah. 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 Jeez, it's a real shame if someone corked that leg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bang. Uh, Alex <laughs> Davies as well, that bump on Lockie Jones is brutal. That was uh, brutal. Yeah. He did something in like the first half. I'm like, who's that dude? He rules. And I had to look it up because I'd never seen him before. No, it was his he was first good game. last year. Alex Davies. It was his first game this year. Oh, this year, yes, yes. I was like, he's great. And then I saw him try and kill someone. I was like, oh, Mm. that sucks. Anyway, good win for Gold Coast. Uh, Noah Anderson at home. Yep. Is his full name. 
Absolutely amazing. Yeah, awesome. Uh, stupid Sex of Flanders, pretty handy as well. Without Took Miller, for them to bounce back and be this good was pretty good. So good Bailey job Humphreys as well at home. Really I love good. a good Bailey Humphreys home game. Yeah. Uh, two fan bases, how are they feeling? Suns fans up and about. Dennis, but it's like home. do it away. They're like, yeah, do it away, yeah. Power. Fra- feeling fraudy. Fraudy. Feeling- yeah, I think. Oh, I- this is great. There's a song. <laughs> I've got a song. <laughs> oh, no. There's a Dave Grain and Carl Snake song, Feeling Kind of Sporty. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of sporty. Porter's at <laughs> Feeling kind of oh, sporty. Yeah, <laughs> feeling kind of fraudy. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love that. Dave, I also love Dave Graney. We should get Dave Graney on the show. How That'd do we keep great. getting him into songs? I don't know. No, that, what do you mean? That's just honest, his natural self. To be honest, my, my brain is a song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the universe is a song. You know, Alex. people overthink but things. I, have you not listened things. to anything Bill Walton ever said in his long, illustrious life? Like, the universe is a song. Yes. yes. But it's also, I, get, I said Harley Reid is Black Betty, and he's yep. just... It's, it's yeah, just catch it on. Catch we on. will actually have a medley of Harley Reid songs coming up in the near future. Yeah. Uh, Album drop. Yeah. Power, feeling kind of fraudy. Uh, <laughs> Richmond, they came up short against GWS. This wasn't as bad as expected. Fun GWS game. sort of tore, like s- slowly just turned the screws. In, in bits the and pieces, half. they went, all right, tsunami for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Four and goals. They, you'd literally turn around and it's like, boom, Jesse Hogan's got another one. Toby mm. Green's got another yeah, one. They were both we're, great. We're right, boys. Callum Ward's kicked another. Yeah. But. Richmond just had these moments where they'd have these weird big brain farts and just it ended up costing them. Tom Green had 37 touches and like 80 super coach points because yeah. he oh. was wildly inefficient. He had a lot of, no, he had a lot of handballs, just not many inside 50s. I don't know. It was a weird, like you look at the stats, go, oh, Tom Green dominated. Definitely didn't dominate. There was a lot of Richmond players. Mm-hmm. Toronto was playing pretty well against his old team and so yep. did Jacob Hopper. Two real, I love a good uh, re- revenge uh, game. They both had good revenge games and then Toronto had to be subbed off. Because he yeah. was concussed. One uh, of the best names in the business, Steely Green, was really good. Three three snags and 11 Every touches. time he turned around, he was kicking a goal. Yeah, he, really he, cool. he was fun, yeah. Um, but this was the biggest score the GWS have ever had of the G stats, boy. Yes, yeah, biggest score of the G uh, ever. And and then the first time they've beaten the Tigers at the G as well, which is which is pretty wild. I thought I feel they like would have. Obviously, they lost to them in a big game at the <laughs> they G. They did. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even turn up that game. They were yeah. orange traffic cones. That was a tough one. Mm. Uh I think from this, you learn a little bit about, so how do the fan bases feel? GWS fans will be like, we're back. We've won games of the MCG. I don't know if they would say that we're back, but. But this is also just like one of those squirrely games. Yeah. Richmond like like to hang in there. Richmond will just be annoying, annoying, annoying. And they were for a bit and GWS went, all right, that's enough. This is like, yeah, we always said Richmond, the MCG will be annoying to play as an interstate team. They've come up after beating Carmel, like, all right. Two in a row, sick. Knock it over. We've got Gold Coast at home next week. Professional win. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yep. Good job, GWS. It's a big, big sound. And then finally, West Coast Brisbane in a wildly entertaining yeah, game. really close. That comes right down to the wire out west where the uh, Lions hold on to win at 106-93. In a very odd, weird, when I talk about scoring worms, Lions take control in the second quarter. Well, the end of the first quarter. Mm. Yep. Lead the rest of the way. Didn't really change. The West Coast again. going ding, ding, mm. ding, ding. We're yeah. almost there. We're almost. Ah, oh, ding, 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 ding. I love a good score. I mean, letting, score worm, letting score worm. Lockie Neal just roam free and pick up 34 and kick a couple of goals. Probably not the best. I mean, John Longmire's probably just going. Who would you put on him? Jimby, maybe? Just for next week, John Longmire's like, notes. Tag Lockie Neal. Other notes. Pick up bread. <laughs> yeah. uh, the J Train and Oscar Allen. I love them. I love them so much. I had to explain on NBA Australia the other day about how much like that's why we got a bobblehead. Delhi, Delhi, and Jingles. Yep, like they're on the Boomer Squad. Yep, and to be honest, outside of anybody within their immediate family, I probably love them more than anyone on the tour. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What's your right? coach name? King Delhi. It's Tins. probably just like it's me, and then everybody else fighting for second. Yeah, <laughs> Oscar Allen and the J Train. I might be right up there as well with both of them because. Oscar Allen 2+. plus. He was Oscar Allen 3+, plus today. Yeah. I love that. The J-Train, he missed one. Kick Pretty two. brutal. Kick two, yeah. Still kick two. Solid. It's just the rest of the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Flying Ryan was... <laughs> what are we doing? Flying Ryan was good in his 100th. He had 20 in kick two. I Tim Kelly had 29 touches. It's like, all right, cool. Elliot, yo, yeah. we're 24. That's this just was the, the Witherden Bowl, and Witherden showed up with 22 touches. Yeah. Love that. Witherden <laughs> Bowl. It's just... Outside of that, it's just it's, it's not great. There's not a yet yeah, as Gannon, the creamy middle's just not there. No, like, Harley did not. bits and pieces, but not enough. Yeah, how many do you? Uh, Dane Zorko tried to just beat up a teenager. That was pretty funny. Harley had twenty. That's that's, that's all right. You'll take that. Trying to beat up a teenager, Sydney in the mid thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Purple man, just clasping hands. Love that. <clears throat> 
It just that's why King's Cross got shut down, wasn't yeah. it? Just like yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I was just juiced up dudes from the West just wanting to punch on Alex. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you were <laughs> I'm not a juiced anyway. up dude. <laughs> you should have seen the teenagers like bad. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> Me as a juiced up Westie? Yeah. You kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that mustache says a lot. Uh, <laughs> but Zorko doing that was uh, weird. Don't do that to her. Whoa, holy weed, bam, bam. Not your he boy. Got his head kicked in, bam, bam. He did also. Time after time, he had a couple of moments. Where he was like, "I'm really good. Check this out." <laughs> Take he just like, tucks, like tucks the ball under his, his arm, movement. just goes oh, bang, 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 beautiful. gives the old one-two skidoo, and off he goes. Uh, still, the Lions to pull this out mm. without really having like the massive, like to be honest, like Lockie Neal was hugely important for them. Even without kicking him, those two yeah. goals, the one that he got called late that they had to check. Great goal Turns from the out boundary, massive. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Cam Rain and Keith a couple as well, obviously. Hipwood and Joey Duckett's get two each. Charlie Cameron gets two each. On the road, we understand that. Six the between them. Is that. this sort of that moment where you go, oh, watch out next time we're at the Gabba? They're going to kick Whoa, 15 between They still have been crap at the That's, Gabba. They almost lost the Next Sunday deeps. against the Swans. Let's yeah. Go. I love this. Good Maybe. setup. Uh, Chucky Cameron also, we may see the good bloke clause mm. come out again for – he pinned Liam Duggan's arms and then drove so Duggan. I reckon the good bloke clauses out. There. I think, yeah, you, you've got one time it's, to use yeah, it. It's, it's Monopoly. It's yeah. get out of jail free. Yeah. But it's. I've been such a good bloke. <laughs> ah, right. This but time. it's different. So you did it again. Oh, but I'm a good uh, bloke still. So, uh, no, you're not. No, clearly. You, did it, you did it again in three months. Yeah. But it's because it's not like a usual sling tackle, but it's because he's pinned his arms and he's driven him to the ground and Duggan's. Back of Duggan's head is slammed into the turf and concussed him. So mm, it's a worry. Does that I we usually do say it's I think based in the rules, on it's yeah. based on the outcome. If you concuss them, you have to be Yeah, we'll get a week yeah. or two, I reckon. Because Dangerfield got a week for his tackle on Walsh got off it for the good bloke clause and the just yeah. talking for 75 minutes. Filibustering. Yeah. Uh like Toby Bedford will probably get looked at for his tackle on Toronto, which I don't think he should get suspended for that Ooh. one. I'm more of the if one of these tackles is to be suspended for, it'd be Charlie's okay. not. Bedford. Okay, fair enough. How are the two fan bases feeling after that? West Coast are like, Harley Reid's back. This is awesome. They saw Simo. Act. Well, you didn't even say that. Simo did the Simo his did best Australian yeah. impression from Marmot. He did the. He also gave it. He was basically like the Barack Obama meme. Who, who, Barack did that yeah. on the weekend. Yes. With Team USA, just like high fiving everybody. Yeah. And just like, yeah, these are my guys. Going to have some tins nice. with the 2018 uh, Premiership Union. That was yeah. pretty cool. Up in the. Up with in Justin the Langer. Yep. Uh, two coaches who got sacked. Yeah. The <laughs> Lions fans would be just like, we're top four. Yeah, this is how great. the hell are they top four at their horrible start? That As was I said, unbelievable. Boy, I'm pretty sure that losses in the first they don't matter four months of the season yeah. don't matter. Well, <laughs> I, I'm happy with that. North and North had a lot in that period. There know. are losses, then there's losses. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All doesn't right, matter. tipping results. Speaking of losses, I ended up on six because I changed it to the Blues. I've I've done this yeah. two weeks in a row <laughs> yeah. now, where I've tipped GWS and then gone. I've talked myself into the Blues in the that. show. Switch it over. Did the exact same thing this week. I'm on six. Stats guy six. Yep. Alex six. Seven. Seven. <laughs> the hell, man. That's <laughs> five. He's read, he's read five. it. Yeah, six. <laughs> I'm going back to change it. Five. <laughs> Full credit to the boys. Who was the best team we saw this week? Or at least who gave us the best performance? I'm going to say it was Geelong. Okay. Western Bulldogs are right there. I think Alex is going to talk about that. But Geelong, the way that they handled the pies, especially uh, with all the problems the pies have given them yep. over the years, uh, I really enjoyed watching that Geelong team just go, all oh, right, now we've got this. This is going to be okay. Check yep. it out. Without massive, huge, like incredible standout performance from like Jezza or somebody who was very good, yep. but it was such a really good all-round team effort that I'm yep. like, that ruled for me. Enjoyed that. But on Geelong, honorable mention, Western Bulldogs, without their dudes, like they yeah. trounced and Carlton. They, Carlton, yeah. Just man Killed them. That's boy. Uh, I'll go Melbourne. Bit different to you guys. First time without Gorn and Trax since 2015. I gave them literally no chance, as a lot of people uh, let me know on TikTok. Uh, they were awesome. So hard at it. They were just like, yeah, we don't we don't need our best players. We, yeah. we got we got Ed, Ed Langdon. Like he's a superstar. Hey, Ed Langdon uh, rules. I love it. I love watching Ed Langdon at his best. Uh, this all their players lifted. They just be believed in themselves from the start, and this showed a lot more heart than they have. Uh, also, in the, the, the pregame speech from Goodwin was like, boys, this is Essendon in a high pressure yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. Just just play normally, and you'll be fine. Also, yeah, hating on Essendon. That's that's yeah. beautiful to see Melbourne win. <laughs> Alex, I don't know what I'm saying it, but it's the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, he's talking about I the just, Yeah, <laughs> this is this is big for me, but also like Jamara has 20 and four. Riley West kicks four goals. Yeah, he was awesome. They, they also we, we need to mention they did it without Bont having yeah. much of an impact on the game. He only had 20 odd touches. Bailey Dallas 31 and kicks a goal. Trelaws are laid out. They've got no Norton, no Liam Jones. Like this is a big win. Hmm. 
Just do it again for God's They're sake. They're going to lose next week of like because they can't win to it. The next two games are against Geelong and Sydney. So if they can come out and win one of them, it's like, okay. Will the Dogs win two in a row before Gold Coast win away next? Ooh. Gold Coast are away that, next week, so we question. have a good we'll test. Find out. We'll have to yeah. talk about that. Best on ground of the week. Who was the best player we saw? Cripper! In a losing effort. God, he put the he boys on his back in that last quarter. He had an incredible game for the simple fact that it was, I think, 28 touches. Yep, two 11 goals. clearances. Oh, he was just not massive. Bad. <laughs> Absolutely massive. The two goals were just, it was such a moment. And then there was the following moment, <laughs> I think, after the Cripper goal that got everybody up and about. They just gave up a goal from basically center clearance, and it was horrible. Uh, and then they had another rebound goal very soon after the Cripper goal. And you're like, yep. dude, it's just defense, just a hint of it. That's all we need. And you're going to win this game. And uh, I'll talk about Charlie in a second. But Cripps was fantastic to the point where in that loss, you do wonder, like, he probably still gets, like, a vote, vote or two. Or two. So. I, think he, I think he might get two, yeah. Stats boy. Uh, this is going to be very left field, but I'm going a uh, rookie. Why not? Unsung hero, Lawson Humphreys. He's only played two games, two wins. The three Cats games. Is it three games? Yep. Isn't it? Oh, sorry, three wins. Yeah, because they're on a three-game win streak. 23 disposals, 96% efficiency, six intercepts, four scoring moments, the most marks on the ground, which I think was 13 yeah. as well. I know that a lot of his kicks were sort of chipping around, but every time he came out of half He was going at like 90-something percent efficiency. It, even like lots of them were like 50-metre kicks. He was just hitting a target. I would love to have that type of player at North that you can just rely on hitting a target every time. Sort of the same as Bailey Daly. He plays very similar to him. So just, yeah, I don't think enough people are going to be talking about him until he gets that rising star norm. I, think I feel get. like there should be, uh, whoa, there should be the combined um, old mate, no mates of Kane Corns going, why were they haggling about this draft pick? I yeah. think in the radical yeah. trade that turned into Lawson Humphreys. Yeah. yeah. So they've done really – Geelong, again, have just pulled someone out of nowhere because I think he's going to be a star. He played Resi. Like, I saw someone going, oh, he didn't just play Resi. He was playing ones in the waffle. It's like, yes, but he played enough Resi's games to qualify for finals. That Therefore, is crazy. he was playing Resi's. And now he's killing it for the Cats. So. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Alex. Errol Goulden. 41 yeah, touches, five clearances, 738 metres gained to make him the first person to have 10 kilometres gained with the football this season. 10 kilometres. Yep. I don't but think it's, North it's, have it's, had I was going to say, like 41 <laughs> touches and 10 kilometres, that's about 22 touches and five kilometres because it was against North. Yeah. But also, <laughs> yeah, 41, had... he was absolutely everywhere. Three votes, Golden Low is happening. Ooh. He's coming. See, this I've, was... got, I've still got money on him from the yeah. start, but I was going to cash I reckon he's three, Warner two. Okay. And Logan McDonald one. Cannibalism. Yeah, there's too many gu- too many dudes. It's all right. <laughs> old it was mate, awesome. Old mate, no mates. Mark Pittnett. Uh, <laughs> Pitto. I love you, Pitto. But TDK is a weapon in just so but many different But is it Pitto's facets. fault? He's getting picked. Shouldn't it be the match committee's of fault? Of course it is. But it's like it, Pitto, it's can't, better, Pitto, Pitto yeah. can't change who Pitto is. Right? <laughs> but Pitto is also now an amazing trade chip this offseason season. Like to any of the ruck starved sort of teams out there, there Is are he? a few. Geelong, yeah. just kick you know, kick something up the up the road and away we go. He, like, it's amazing to sort of say, yeah, you win the hit out battles. He's also you, not an amazing trade thing. It's like you get pick forty for him. Exactly. I don't like. I'm just. I want him to be happy. That's, <laughs> that's all I want, right? And so TDK nice. is fantastic. My query is always going to be what happens in the secondary ruck when you throw Harry McFive up there, whatever. Uh, but Pitto, it's an old mate, no mates, because he's going to cop it. He probably doesn't deserve it. It's not him that's causing all this havoc. He's still playing really, really well. Yeah, he's playing okay, yeah. But yeah. it's still win the clearance battle or win the game. Just win the game. Win the it's, game. I'd rather win the game. <laughs> like everyone gets, oh, but you win clearances, you win games. Not no, necessarily. No, no, what are we no, talking no. about? Uh, but the other one really is probably, I mentioned this earlier, Charlie Curnow. What are you doing? Three goals, seven. Played an incredible game. <laughs> he was everywhere. And like at times you're like, he's getting manhandled by Buku Kamas. What is going on? And then he'd sort of just slip through. Like, oh, shots. that was a great, great snag. But three or seven in, at Marvel too. I don't even care if half of them were like hard so shots. So the yeah. toughest part is when it's you bad. watch him from like thirty-five meters out on a slight angle. One hundred percent of the time, that you're just like, I don't think he's going to kick this, and he misses, and you mm. broken your heart. The weirdest one was, I think he was on the left pocket, on the boundary, wrapping around. 95% of the time he kicks that goal. Yeah. Misses it. You're like, oh, yeah. This He's off. Cool yeah, play. yeah. We're done. But three goals, seven is a bit ridiculous. That's it's, all, it's, in, it's still impressive to have 10 scoring shots Exactly, yourself. 10 scoring shots. Yeah. Three but seven. if he turns it into 5-5. Five, 5-5, five, five, we probably win the game. Yeah. So, 
Either way, that's why it's a bit old, mate. No, mate. Yes. That's boy. Uh, I talked about him before. I'm going back again about Charlie Dixon. <laughs> Charlie Dixon I'm going well. back to the well. You He's can't just be one in. of those ladies just with the water on her head. He's just oh, where's the back Charlie the Dixon well? well? We're going to go back there, fill her up, boys. We got it. Check it out. I was hoping we didn't talk about him too much before, but we did. But anyway, Charlie Dixon just injuring his own teammate. He fell all over him. Todd Marshall's been an awesome forward for them. He's been kicking goals. So this is the classic. Can't be doing that, Oh, mate, no, mate, when you get on the bus, what does everyone do? Charlie this Dixon guy. gets but, on the bus and goes, don't you say yeah, a word. Not many people are going <laughs> to question just that. Going, yeah, thanks a lot, Charlie. Yeah, good on you. <laughs> yeah, he is the scariest looking man in the <laughs> AFL, so not many people on that bus are going to have a gold in, but yeah. a few people yeah, can. Sam Pepper was still alive, he <laughs> would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, he would fight him, yeah. All so right. I'm not fighting him, but yeah, old mate, no mates for sure. Alex, same game. Jason Horn Francis didn't have a touch in the first quarter, gave away four free kicks. Also, a 50-meter penalty, only had nine touches. Yeah, also, no had to have the face-to-face chat with his dad during the game. Like, yeah. Mate, like, wh- what are you doing out there. Your mother and I are very yeah. disappointed in you, Jason. Yeah, and then also uh, stats guy, according <laughs> to both Melbourne and Essendon fans, because when he did that, all the Essendon fans are, oh my God, you've just jinxed us. Oh, yeah, Why yeah, would you all, do that? All and then Melbourne all fans are in this morning going, this guy's an idiot. Jim so knows what for, a jinxed Essendon for is. For context, what you're saying is like the cut from last Thursday yeah. yeah. show, the big call where stats boys like, the Bombers are winning by six. I need to speak to Olivia and uh, Leo about that one. I didn't ask him to cut that out. I reckon they, they knew what was going to happen that. there. So anyway. Jinx, no, yeah. but look, to be honest, Essendon is still the best team in the AFL. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Jinx Prove me side. wrong, Bombers. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Why I can't stand. I can't stand Sook and Swans. Oh, have a Sook. Some of these people did take it Cry too far. Cry me a river, they Tom yeah. Harley. Yeah. Oh, the comment section of every oh, single post as God. well. Oh. Yeah. Toby Green's a criminal. <laughs> oh, he's doing a thing with Heaney. Heaney. Mm. The weird thing was the Heaney video. So, again, for context, Heaney comes out just like, uh, it felt very much like hostage, ISIS hostage video. You're like, this is a bit weird. Isaac, we he blinked twice if you're okay. He's just like, I'll oh, never blink again. And Toby Green does it, and it's pretty funny. And you're like, ah, oh, it's good. That was funny. But geez, just a bit of banter, Swans mate. fans cheering. He, he didn't save kids from a burning I know, building. I know. He got robbed out for a week <laughs> for breaking a dude's and face. It's, like, it's just one week. Like, yeah, we love you, Isaac. Thanks, Isaac. Yeah, you're the real hero. You're actually the victim here, Isaac. Get out of it, you fogs. <laughs> he got robbed out. Yes. Deal with it. Jeez. And then Tom Harley going. <laughs> Oh, everyone's so mean to us. <laughs> Shut up, Tom Harley. I don't have no a sook, one cares mate. about you, you yeah. sook. Jeez, Swan <laughs> Sooks are the worst. They're going to win the flag no matter what because they're the best team we've seen in 150 years. Yeah. Jeez. For the record, I'd moved on, and when I saw that Toby Green video, I was like, that's pretty funny. Yeah, GWS's social media is the best I in the business. I Loved it. But yeah. also, for the record, Toby Green and Isaac Henney run a business together. They Do you not think that Toby would gone, hey, mate, can I take the piss out of this? Do you uh, care? I've d- it's two teams in Sydney. Yeah. Just a bit of go at each exactly. other. But it's that's also, awesome. And also, let's all the, go. All the Swans there to say is, that's great. You can win social media. We'll just keep beating you on the field. And we'll win a flag. Just go, hey, it. flag check. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Hey, yeah. Never how's, won. It, how's it been this year? That's right. We keep well, winning. You could just, you should, they should have just put the attendance check. That, no, they should have <laughs> just put the score from two weeks ago up. Exactly. Stats boy. Uh, why I can't say, I'm not going to be as uh, fired up as you about it, but Clarko dropping Will Phillips uh, for my beloved North Melbourne. He was very average last week, but the fact we're playing the best midfield, the best players in the whole competition, Will Phillips has been really good. I said, oh, Clarko's actually done a good move like a month ago, putting Will Phillips as a tagger. Then we're like, no, we're not going to tag uh, Golden, Warner, uh, Robot, him. Robot him, like Lizard. all these guns that uh, we've talked about on the show. So Clarko just taking a massive L this week. Yeah, on that then, one. and then just Errol really cool. and Chad just going, this, this is pretty cool. Well, yeah, These training then, codes then, are awesome. Yeah, exactly. Like Liam Shields is pretty much a tra- uh, training code yeah. on defense because he's so old. So anyway. Also, no Harry good. Sheasel can't defend. Oh, not he's this week, like but he usually can. Yeah. Like, no, he, usually, he usually can, not yeah. this week. Though. It's above the breaks. He's eight. Yeah. He's fine. He's eight. Alex. Um, players slipping. What's going on with footy boots at the moment? Uh Bring back metal studs. Yeah, bring, honestly, bring back metal <laughs> no, studs or the long rubber tips because you can't like you can't have this many players slipping over on supposedly perfect conditions on good days. Way too many people at the SCG on MCG Saturday slipping. Well. Friday night yeah. was horrendous. Was wet? Was and so wet? I've now started looking at what brand these boots are. I believe it's anyone who's wearing Nike boots are slipping oh. over more than the rest. We're about to get a Nike sponsorship. Oh, they were right there. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Knight. Phil Knight is outside. Just there, yeah. What are you doing, Alex? I read Shoe Dog. It's an awesome book. <laughs> Shoe Dog is a... 
All right, now we're doing book reviews. <laughs> uh, Shoe Dog is a fascinating one of like, I was always right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you, Phil? Were you? <laughs> it kind of feels like everybody you dealt with is like, this dude sucks. <laughs> so anyway. Um, but yeah, play slipping book. over. Like, it was weird, what, what's yeah. wrong with the molded studs? What's going on here? I'm going to blame that for the Blues losing as well. Oh, oh, at, at, at Marvel, yeah. Well, <laughs> at, <laughs> uh, no, but the Swans were doing it last week against St Kilda. That's I'm on true, board. That's true. It's gross. Uh, Supercoach wrap from the weekend. We had a, I knocked off Dan in our draft thing. First person to beat him all year. Nice. No one cares. Uh, no, um, I don't mind that. <laughs> pretty big scores, I think, across the board, right? So I topped over 2,300. So 2,393 here. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, Lawson Humphreys rips off 108. I really wish I'd been able to switch him around. Yeah, I got uh, him in there. And loop him on properly, but yeah. I didn't. Billy Dowling with 101. But the big scores for the big dogs, <laughs> there were the likes of Lockie Neal ripping off a massive one today, 143. Tom Papley yeah. and Toby Green, the weird little sort of small forward dudes. Yeah. 154 and 147. Whoa, Arrow with 142 as well. Chumley. My beloved Nick Martin, 142. <laughs> He's back. Because he kicked four goals. Yeah. yeah. Probably not going to happen each week. LDU, 133. Same as Adam Saar. There's a sneaky, Ooh. interesting mm. one for your back line. Yeah, if you're might be a bit cheaper. That. Noah Anderson at home. Uh, at home, Noah Anderson, 132. He averages uh, 140 at home. Yeah. Chandley <laughs> Warner, 130. Ridley was also really good in that back line too, yeah. just getting a lot of ball. 127, oh. it looks like. Uh, Bailey Dale, we mentioned him earlier, 123. Grundy continued to crush at the SCG, 121. 121. Zach yeah. Butters, 120. Uh, Connor Rosie didn't have a massive one though. 105. But that's still okay. Still interesting numbers. I think my favorite one was though, Luke Jackson, 116. And I might be the only one with running the Luke Jackson, Ned Moyle. Ruck combination. You put Ned Moyle on that from Ned Gold Moyle, Coast. Yeah. 110. You little beauty. I uh, put Billy Dowling on the field with Same, he, with Kazheny obviously suspended. 101 for Love the that. Bill Dowling, but I loopholed uh, uh, Grundy as my vice. I took the 1 2 1 and put Tom Green on the bench. That worked well because he only got 93. Perfect. Nice. Sean Manor from Heaven, 75. Noise. He's, he's, yeah, he's been great. Love that. All right, there you go. That was a big, 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 big round. It was a big, 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 big sound at the MCG just before. That is it for AFL Today. For today, we'll be back on Wednesday for more AFL Today on that day, Wednesday. Uh, so thank you to Alex. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I think we should just cheer you off because, like, again, you're the real victim and hero here. So oh, I see it. Hey. Top, top of the ladder. We, just, we should top just cheer him off. Yeah. It's like he's no, a hero. I'm like clapping. I, don't, you, you, I was uh, about to say, I am taking there. next Thursday and Sunday off, so I'll, mm. be, I'll be up in Brisbane. Um, Actually, do a couple of videos up there. Why not? All right. And thank you, Stats Boy. Thank you. Anyone that's uh, seeing this tonight as well, check out Football Today live stream uh, for the Euros. Yeah. Hopefully football isn't coming home. Hopefully Spain get the job done. It's coming home. It's <laughs> I really don't want to hear that song. Yeah, anymore. but it's like, it's like I'm torn. It's like, do I want Spain to win after how they acted after the, they won the Women's World Cup yeah. last year? Or do I want England? Like, can I just support the referees and hope everyone has a fun time? <laughs> can sure. the head of like whoever is in charge of the Euros kiss one of the players? Yeah. Oh, that was dodgy. That was the women's that, that's what I mean. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. yeah, that was the Spain guy. But it wasn't the player. The player no, no, yeah, awesome. but, the, but then the Spain FA back. All right, back that's here. football today. So go listen to that show. Yes. Uh, in between, remember to get her all around all of our shows, Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia cracks up very, very soon as well. We've got a pub meeting about that this week. Hold <laughs> all tickets oh, as well. That's on hiatus for the yep. moment, but plenty of stuff right there. So subscribe, so and like all of those shows across all your podcast apps. And, of course, YouTube and all the good stuff. Get around them like the Swans getting around having a sook, cheering Isaac Henney, but also getting around Luke Parker for kicking that goal. That was sick. It was his 200th goal for the Swans. I enjoyed that a lot. Awesome. Uh, so that's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Until then, remember, look after yourselves. And footy is back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.